Hi, I'm Brad Kerner. I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager for Ventana. And here behind me we have our beautiful Ventana wall at IdealWorks at London here for the London Art Week. And this is an amazing display and there's so much potential implementations for this. And you did a catalog to show this? Yeah, this is an architectural lookbook that we've made for architects and interior designers to give them inspiration on various projects and ways to use modular LED screens. So let's go have a look at, at, uh, at this. So we made this architectural lookbook to help architects and interior designers understand what the potential is of using our product, which is a ultra-thin architectural tile with micro-LED technology onto it. You can see this is 300 by 300 millimeters and only 18 millimeters thick. So it really starts to feel and look and is used like an architectural tile would be used. This could be revolutionary potentially for the architects. Absolutely. I, I am, by background, I'm an architect, but I have a, a lot of experience in theater and architectural lighting design and LED product development. And when I saw this, it just felt like the future. It felt like, unlike any other format I've seen in LED displays or LCD or any other technologies. And this opens up a whole new world of using micro LED displays as an architectural scale surface of various sizes and form factors. And so, so let's have a look at some of these uh, examples you have in there. Yeah, so we used um, Midjourney AI to create a variety of different concepts. Uh, we Super yacht. Super yacht. These are large format screens, so you can imagine this is an ultra luxury yacht and this is a large scale micro LED. And just, um, again, just showing customers, and none of these are projects that exist yet, but showing but, uh, them what the potential is. This is an open, open plane, right? Potentially the windows can slide in. Yes. And then you have the, the real amazing view, but you Absolutely. could have this and no problem with the brightness and it could be mapped. It would just work. Absolutely. You know, the, the, there's two parts of this story. There's the physical design of the screen, and then there's the design of the content that's going to go onto the screens. And this is something I'm particularly interested in helping architects and interior designers sort of get their heads around, is that for so long they've tried to hide television screens. They've tried to take LCD screens and hide them in elaborate ways of going up and down in cabinetry or behind curtains or whatever. And now we're asking them to go completely the other way where the entire wall surface becomes this digital portal uh, to the virtual world. And it is a surface in and of itself. Obviously, it has a certain quality to it. But when you put the beautiful digital media on it, you open up this new world of creative opportunity for interior designers and architects to, to think about these things. Some of this is... Uh, uh I mean, it's, you're just trying to imagine. You're trying to imagine potential applications, potential customers. Could this is looks like a living room, right? But then you have uh, all kinds of other examples also. Yeah. So this book here is a mixture of showing uh, these displays. Roughly half is a more traditional screen form factor in 16 by 9. But then we purposely made many images here that really break that, and we try to show it as different form factors and different scale sizes, um, and also capitalizing on the thinness of the tile. So for example, with this image, we imagine this is actually a structural glass plane uh, where this is mounted on an ultra thin uh, uh, water jet cut aluminum back backing that can be suspended. So it almost looks like it's hanging in free air. Uh, you really can't do this with any other product system. And, um, you know, for sure, lots of traditional screening rooms, but then again, you could imagine this as like a luxury Aspen retreat where you have your fireplace built in and you have your screen. And when you're not using it to watch any media content, you can have these beautiful backdrops. Um, you can think about having different textures, patterns, biomimetic uh, feelings. It could be rendered aquariums. Um, it could be space. Um, there's just a world of content that can be explored when you think of these things as architectural surfaces. And, and we're here at the Digital Art Week, so you could have the most amazing art 
and uh, animated or static and both? Yeah, and let's, let's move here into this part of this, uh, the lookbook where we get into more kind of creative ideas, right, immersive. So you can imagine perhaps this is a ballroom or a conference room or this could just be the dining room of a luxury house. And when your entire wall surface becomes a digital display, what sort of media content? I mean, you can become very fanciful. This was a concept here of looking at a, a hotel meeting room or a hotel ballroom and just imagining how they would use a sort of media content package to make really beautiful wedding scenarios the whole or roof meeting could scenarios. Be a display. The whole roof, a whole ceiling can be on the sides, yeah. on the back, like all uh, surrounded. Absolutely surrounded. By surrounded. Displays. And it could open up a whole new revenue stream for these uh, uh, hospitality providers where they are uh, offering a digital media package or a customized media package. I mean, you'll have artists, I think, that will begin to fill these gaps where they will be offering art content and customized content for whatever the people need. So, so when you are at the, at that, the, like, let's say this meeting room, you could be in space or you could be in a, uh, underwater. You're only limited and, by your imagination. And uh, you could be like in a, in a new world, anything. Absolutely. This is one of my favorite images here um, for a couple reasons. So first off, you could imagine that this is just an absolute gorgeous feast of color. And it really maximizes the vivid colors that you get from micro LED. It could also maximize the vivid depth, the bit depth you get. You could imagine there's some subtle animation, maybe a light breeze blowing over these flowers, or maybe they're in bloom almost, sort of like an artificial uh, scenario. But what I like about this is that if you notice, there's two mullions here. And if you look very closely into the corners here, what you see is that this actual digital surface looks set back about a foot from these end walls. And the combined effect is a sort of parallax effect where if you're in this room and you move your head left or right, you will see that you're moving behind these mullions and that the edges here, it looks like there's something beyond. And that will create a very, very strong sensation of this is some sort of real view beyond that's at a much, much larger scale than just the wall that's apparently in front of you. Is that because it's going to have sensors and see where your head is? or? No, no, no. That This is actually just a very simple detailing trick where you have a very uh, unnecessary window mullion because there's no window here, but you could put some sort of you know aluminum bar or extrusion there. And just the way you detail the ends is it looks like you can look around when you get close to the screen and look in, you look beyond the end of the wall. So you don't need any active head tracking or rendering or sort of perspective correction just to get a very simple realistic feeling from it. That's awesome. Um, let me show you another image that's been very successful. Oh, this is a very lovely one where you just think about like hospitality uh, lobbies and lounges and like you have these magnificent digital art pieces that you can show. Um, you know, nature scenes, waterfalls, large format art. This has also been uh, one of the most popular images we made in this book because people love how you have this sort of architectural scale proportions to this digital screen. And this almost becomes like a Rorschach test where certain people look at this differently. Some think this is a fireplace that's set in. Some say, well, you're showing a virtual screen on the wall. Uh, you could imagine this is a virtual fireplace. Uh, it's really whatever your imagination wants. And uh, what's amazing with, about Ventana also is the aspect ratio. If it goes all the way to the, I mean, there's no limit. There's no limit, yeah. Um, there's really no functional limits for us either in processing. We can, uh, our system is natively 8K. We can put two systems together to work in unison for up to 16K of resolution. So really no practical limits in terms of architectural scale projects. And this section here gets a lot of people very interested. We, we started to think about luxury kitchens, right? And there seems to be no shortage to how much money in the luxury applications people are willing to spend on kitchens. And we said, what a perfect environment, right? You talk about layers of reality, right? You can imagine that behind this sort of very sleek, minimalist kitchen setup, you have this beautiful LED micro LED wall. And 
the content starts to think about cycles of time, right? So as an interior designer, you could start to think about, well, if they're waking up in the morning, what does the screen look like? What does the space feel like in the morning? Or what does it feel like in the middle of the afternoon or for dinner or when they're having a romantic evening at night? This might be uh, cherry blossoms in a very romantic setting, and you might get some sort of you know, dappled wind and a periodically a few cherry leaves falling down. Very subtle animation that just gives you this sense of life and vivality that you have um, moving through. It's also kind of lighting for the room. The display it's, could be lighting. Yeah. Um, I have said in previous conferences, is in terms of architectural lighting and the integration of these digital media surfaces, every pixel becomes a light and every light becomes a pixel. That you had a fusion of all of these control systems now. At some point, every architectural light is controlled via an IP network. It's just effectively become a series of pixels. And um, these surfaces become so predominant in these spaces that they are the light source, right? You don't, you don't need wall washing on this. You don't need any, they, they are so vivid, they are so bright. Um, this is another thing that I think interior designers will come to embrace and that they will start to dictate or specify how bright is the surface, how much contrast do they have. They'll be thinking about things like the amount of motion you have in the space. Is it, is it too much and too crazy or is it too slow and too muted? Um, and uh, it will be just a, uh, an amazing creative opportunity when you get interior designers starting to think of these digital surfaces with a new language, right? They'll be thinking about, like I said, layers of reality, cycles of time, the media content. They'll be tailoring these towards their um, occupants of the space, the clients that they're working with. It's really an amazing opportunity. And I think that they're going to be extending their business um, areas, right? Moving from their traditional focus of furniture systems, uh, fabrics, finishes, tiles, the things that an interior designer would typically make a, um, a mood board, a material sample board that they present in front of their clients. Now they're going to have to present a media concept for these walls that's just as important to the placemaking of the space as any any other material in the space. And uh, I get lots of comments on my video about the name Ventana as a window. It so, is. And it's one of the most important things in a, bu in a building. And you, you can put windows where there's no windows. Yeah. And it's a window into a new world, potentially. It is. It is. We call it the window to the future is our tagline. And um, you know, when you have such an elemental system, in fact, I made this page here so that it looked almost like a a fundamental drawing that anybody could interpret without any language needed. Um, how do you put this together? You know, these things come together to form walls in any configuration that you want, any proportion, any scale, and um, it just—it's its an amazing new opportunity to fuse the digital world into the real world in a beautiful way so that it is not intrusive, that it feels part of the space, that there's a harmony between the digital media content and the actual feeling of the space that's been built. So um, I guess you, you, you're speaking with a bunch of architects, right? Yes. And uh, I guess maybe uh, a lot of interior architects excited they are, uh, especially in an event like this at IdealWorks where we have such a beautiful screen and we have two artists that are exhibiting really beautiful content that is expressly designed for an architectural setting. Um, there's a mesmerizing quality to the motion that's in the art and the content on these screens. And I think it just it adds a whole new level of richness into architectural spaces that I think once designers get over the hurdle of coming back from this culture of, you know, we don't want any screens in our space, we want to hide everything electric, we don't want it to look technical at all, and they realize, well, wait, the whole surface is a display screen. What can we do with that? Do we reinvent wallpaper? Do we create extended sense of space? Um, do we create 
biomimetic feelings to the space? Do we use geometric patterns? Um, you know, does it, are we doing an arts and crafts house and we're gonna put arts and crafts style content or are we doing a Zaha Hadid style futuristic penthouse and we want some content to match that. So um, we think that architects and interior designers are really gonna embrace this. Um, it's just so fundamental of a shape, of a form factor that you know, they'll identify this right away. It's just like it could be a porcelain tile that they're very used to dealing with on their projects. And, and I don't know what tiles people use, but there are some materials that are quite expensive. Some kind of, uh, mar, uh, you know, I don't know what they call it, right? Mar uh, In architecture, there's lots of very expensive materials. I mean, you have various yeah. stones, you have woods. I mean, you have surfaces that can be very luxurious in terms of their looks, their aesthetics, and their price point. So this is just uh, one of the expensive tiles for now on the, uh, uh, on the palette of tools for the yes. architects. And hopefully it'll come down with mass production and then it'll be yep. a, a democratized. The future will be so great that everybody can have this in the future. Inevitably, yes. Just like Moore's Law, it seems like all of these LED displays continually drop pretty steadily in price over time. Um, at some point, yes, this will be something that a do-it-yourselfer will eventually have some system like this in the future where they can put these together and get amazing high-quality video tiled across their surface. And we would talk about interior designers, but also uh, building architects could rethink the whole prioritization of what happens in each of the different rooms and how they can just do something completely different built around your technology. Yeah, and that's actually the challenge that, you know, they can't overdo it, right? They have to find the right content style. They have to create a, um, an aesthetic that matches their firm, that matches what their clients' goals are, that makes things feel uh, wonderful to live in that space, right? I think the reaction to a lot of LED walls is that it's been used for advertising in very, very um, prominent spaces like Las Vegas or Times Square. And there's so much more creative space available to these LED surfaces that um, we think it's a very brilliant opportunity for a lot of designers to explore. And I don't want to ask about what's happening in the future, but maybe there's potential to do a waterproof version. Maybe it could be exterior. Oh, there's only potential inside. for sure. Um, you know, technically, when you're at such a fine pixel pitch, you do get some mechanical limitations on the edges and putting the tiles together seamlessly. It, is a, it, it gets very challenging, right? I mean, this is a, a incredibly refined tile as it is. It's designed you have for to interior line up applications. You the, the row of pixels exactly so you don't see a change. Yeah, well, we do our own installations for all of our screens, so the tiles go onto a magnetic snap-in and then they're precisely aligned and everything is precisely calibrated. So every tile, every module, every edge is calibrated to make the screen absolutely seamless. All right, and uh, there was just also these little things here. What are these about? Oh, these are just some marketing materials we have at trade shows. Again, these are the same sort of um, concept mood board images and on the back we put some simple Interesting content, again, to make it sort of a, a very simple system so people can see what is the essence of the product system. All right. Oh. So it's going to be busy uh, next few months with the marketing, right? Definitely. Next, next few years. <laughs>